Hey there, greetings everyone and welcome back to another episode of Plan B Success. We have Dr. Ingrid Mura with us today, who's the founder and CEO of Two Front. It's a breakthrough new health tech brand bringing next generation orthodontics to the market. So let's welcome her and find out what it's all about. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Rajiv. My pleasure. So in your own words, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm an orthodontist by trade. Um, so, you know, went through 11 years of higher education to become an orthodontist. Um, and I basically transitioned to being a business owner and launched Two Front um, in 2019. Um, and the reason that I launched it is because back when I was in residency, learning how to do orthodontics, I realized that our industry had shifted forever. Once clear liners are being introduced instead of just braces. Um, and this is amazing because so many more people can straighten your teeth now, but there are a lot of companies out there that are trying to offer some part care. And I realized if patients want a better experience, um, they need better price points, we should be able to give them orthodontist led care. And so that's where we are today. So how, how did you get into orthodontics? Did you always want to be a dentist? Um, believe it or not, I never wanted to be a dentist, specifically an orthodontist. Okay. So back when I was a kid, back when I was eight years old, I had like really crazy teeth. And this, I was this like tiny little girl with massive teeth and they were just coming out of my mouth. And I was pretty insecure about it as a little kid. Um, and this is before Google existed. So at this time I asked Jeeves, um, if there was such thing as a mouth reduction, Turns out I just needed four years of braces. It was a life transforming experience. And I realized that the power of a beautiful smile can really change a person's life. And so I decided back then that this is the gift that I wanna give people um, as the career. So when, when did you finish your, your uh, residency? Uh, 2018. Awesome. So you 2018, you finish and 2019, you're starting a business. How, yeah. did that, how did that happen? Did you just decide that you wanted to jump into business? Did you not <laughs> think about going and trying your hand at it for a few years before you got into business? It's a good question. Um, it was a journey. I'll tell you that much. Um, so I come from a family of physicians. Both my parents are doctors. Um, and I that's all I knew. All I knew was small business Um small businesses. And so when I got into residency in 2015, and I really realized that the future of orthodontics is not going to be small brick and mortar orthodontic offices. It just doesn't serve the vast majority of the population and their needs. Um, and so the idea for like starting a bigger business started in 2015. Um, so my first year at residency, I was at Harvard Dental School and I ended up taking a bunch of classes at the Harvard Business School. Um, and that was kind of my first foray into corporate business. Um, so I was just auditing a bunch of classes. I was super lucky because I got to take them for free. I didn't have to be graded. <laughs> and so I didn't have to take the final exams. I could just benefit from like listening to all of this. Um, and I really just became a student of business for three years. You know, as I was learning orthodontics, I was learning about, I was learning, you know, I was listening to all the podcasts. Uh, How I Built This was one of the best ones that I listened to that frankly just gave me the confidence to think like, oh, I can do this too. Um, and then I read all the books that like are recommended of like how to start a business. But it wasn't until 2019 where I really went to go raise venture capital funding. I just inserted myself into conferences. I just Googled health tech conferences in New York, stumbled my way into finding investors um, that I really started to learn business. <laughs> um, I'm a big believer in you learn to do by doing. There is no amount of book or podcast that you can learn from other experiences. The best way is just get out there and start doing it. That is so impressive. So basically that underscores the point that just going to school is not enough. You know, if you want to create your path, you, you got to go all out and self-learn and, and do it. Now, 100%. What, what, what intrigues me is, you know, you mentioned you, you've been at this health tech kind of uh, conferences out there, meeting and greeting, networking. So tell us about uh, your investor. You know, you're a venture funded company at this point. You, so how did that come about? And how did somebody take the bet on somebody just coming out of school and saying, I'm going to change the face of orthodontics? 
Yeah, so it took, it definitely took quite a bit. I'm not going to lie. Um, one thing that I learned is that fundraising is 95% prep work and 5% execution. The execution piece is just getting in front of investors and like pitching them and like convincing them like why you're going to change this industry forever. But the prep work was the real work. The prep work, I had to learn how to build the financial model. <laughs> I had to learn how to make financial forecasts. I had to learn how to, how to build a brand. And so these are all things that I kind of pieced together over the course of 2018 and 2019 and just meeting people. How do you build a brand? What does marketing look like? What does it mean to run a business? What are the expenses I'm going to have? Um, really just like learning everything from scratch. Up until this point, I was just, you know, learning the basics. And I felt like I had learned a lot from before, but learning how to fundraise is the whole other ball game. Um, so I did a lot of that prep. I networked with as many entrepreneurs as I could. I asked them about their journey and I just started stitching it together. What does a deck look like? You know, I started running my deck by different people. And I think that's kind of like the biggest thing, figuring out like how to build a deck and how to, how to build the financial model and showing these to investors and convincing them that you have the ability to execute on the plan in the deck and the financial model that you present them with. Um, and that's <laughs> to summarize like a year and a half of work, that's kind of what it took. So today when you run your company, do you see yourself more as a, a businesswoman or do you actually uh, get to practice orthodontics as well? No, full businesswoman. There is zero time. Yeah, I say um, my business is my baby. It's 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Um, we, I do miss orthodontics, but I think that what we can do with Two Front is going to change so many more lives, not just patients, but also dentists and orthodontists. And so the same mission and passion for what we're doing is rooted in orthodontics, but I feel like I have the privilege of being able to do it at such a mass level. So, so in, if I were to ask you to tell us what exactly does Two Front do, uh, how would you explain it? Yeah, and this pitch is changing on a daily basis. <laughs> but today, I think the way I would explain it is we basically Uberize the orthodontic model. So we basically allow orthodontists to build digital first hybrid practices by leveraging our free tool. Um, and basically building front treating patients from unused space at local dental offices. So we basically provide orthodontists with the full software and team to actually be able to run a practice for free. We give it to them for free um, and they take a percentage on a per patient basis. Um, and we also take a percentage on a per patient basis. So everything from scheduling to treatment plan presentation to checking people out, providing payment plans, the note-taking system, um, record system, um, and then virtual consultations for patients is all in our systems. So that orthodontists who, who we partner with, we basically match them with top dental offices near them so that they can go in once a month. We make sure that they have a fully uh, full list of pre-qualified patients. And we give them the tools and the team to actually run a virtual first practice with a digital experience and the price point that patients are looking for. Awesome. So when you look at what's happening within the orthodontics landscape, right? Invisalign, for instance, and then um, I think the most recent one has been SmileMD and, you know, and each of them talking about how they're eating away at uh, the other's, uh, uh, you know, business share. How do you see this landscape changing, evolving? Is it kind of moving away from the clinical aspect of, of what people understand as orthodontics to more of a cosmetic thing? Uh, what's your take on it? Actually, we say it's the opposite. Um, Invisalign came to market 20 years ago and basically said, hey, everyone can be an orthodontist. Any general dentist can be an orthodontist. So just for perspective, there's 200,000 general dentists in the United States and only 10,000 orthodontists. So basically Invisalign came to market and said, doctor-led treatment, doctor-led Invisalign treatment. But that is not, um, dentists are not specialists. And so what they can do is very minimal cosmetic movement, um, but that doesn't take into consideration your bite. And your bite is the foundation of your craniofacial system. It is the foundation of your oral health. It's the foundation of your 
if you have any headaches or TMJ problems. And so we're actually allowing patients to straighten their teeth cosmetically, but also when you're, when Invisalign is done by an orthodontist, they make sure that your whole bite works. Because if you straighten your teeth and you're not taking into consideration your bite, what most people get when they're not getting to an orth going to an orthodontist is suddenly they're, they have a lot of pressure on their front teeth and they can't bite on their back teeth. Um, and they start to get TMJ problems and they start to get headaches. And that's because Invisalign should not be considered a cosmetic procedure. Straightening your teeth has to consider your bite. I would never recommend that someone like just straighten without taking into consideration their bite. And so we use Invisalign. Invisalign is the top clear liner product in the market. But the problem there, the problem here is that anyone who offers Invisalign is not guaranteed to be an orthodontist. So with Two Front, we work with the best orthodontists who specialize in Invisalign. And they can basically treat all typical braces cases with Invisalign. And they're doing it from your dental office so that patients can have access to this expert-led care that's affordable with a seamless digital experience right from their dental office. Now, you talk about uh, Generation Z, right? Isn't this applicable mm -hmm. to no matter what your age? Yeah, we have patients. I think our oldest patient is 86. Mm -hmm. So how, how is it, uh, are you focused on a specific area or how's, uh, how's the progress being for, for Two Front? Yeah, so I'll tell you when we first fundraised, um, my thought was we were going to actually build, I didn't know how we were gonna take over the market, right? I knew that there was a massive d issue. I knew that there was a massive supply and demand issue. I knew that half the world was looking to Google, was Googling how to straighten their teeth. Everyone has a decision process. Should I price shop in Vigiline? Should I straighten my teeth in the mail? Should I go to an orthodontist? And I also saw that orthodontists are the most in-debt specialty in the country. Orthodontists are half a million to a million dollars in student debt. So my thoughts were, we are going to um, build beautiful brick and mortar clinics with a digital experience, employ the top orthodontists in the country, and open up these clinics all over the country. So I actually got the founder of One Medical, Tom Lee, to take a bet on me. And he was our very first angel investor. Um, and we were gonna copy a same model. And I realized very quickly that that's not the model we wanted to go after. You spend a lot of money on a depreciating asset, which is brick and mortar. You spend a lot of money on advertising. And ultimately the problem that money can't buy is orthodontists don't wanna be employed. They work their whole lives until they're 30. They, go, they get massively into student debt, not to be someone's employee, to be able to be fireable. So that's when we pivoted last year to this model. And it's officially been our one year anniversary <clears throat> of essentially serving as a platform where orthodontists can be their own business owners, make private practice money, and actually give patients what they want by leveraging the space of dental offices. Awesome. So what about SmileMD, the, the new kid on the block, so to speak, uh, you know, where they say, hey, you know, we'll send you something home, bite into it, send it back, and there, there begins the journey. Um, you know, uh, and there's a lot of debate on whether that's good or bad, or should you be consulting a, an orthodontist or not? What, what's your take on it? Yeah, I'll tell you, it's really not good. And it is the reason that motivated me to stop being an orthodontist and build this company. Um, first of all, the way that clear aligners works, it's a three-step process or a four-step process, actually. You take an impression of your teeth, someone moves your teeth digitally, your aligners are manufactured based on the digital treatment plan, and then someone has to wear those aligners. So every step of that process has to be followed for orthodontics using clear aligners to work. So that impression is a self-impression is never accurate, first of all. Um, a, an impression done by even a hygienist or an orthodontist or a dental assistant normally has to be taken multiple times because it's so inaccurate. So from step one, your aligners are probably not gonna fit if you're doing it yourself, which is why we use digital impressions only to get the most accurate fit. Two, and this is probably the most important part, if an orthodontist is not designing your digital treatment plan, then you are not, those aligners are not going to be printed to move your teeth accurately and efficiently. That's the key here is orthodontics has moved from being a manual specialty of bending wires to a digital specialty of actually digitally treatment planning 
everything that goes into tooth movement or what we call biomechanics, which is a mixture and a combination of torque, you know, moments of resistance, um, centers of resistance, centers of rotation, um, moving, intruding, extruding, rotating, translating, all of this has to be prescribed digitally to actually get results. And that's an art. That's very much an art and a science. And when you go to these companies, you know, these mail order aligner companies, it's a technician. It's generally a technician in Eastern Europe who has no dental background, who's actually moving your teeth digitally like a video game. And because of that, when the 3D, when the aligners are 3D printed, they're not going to actually move your teeth accurately because it doesn't work. Fourth is that you gotta wear those aligners. Um, so to get high quality care, I always tell people you need two things. You need the best clear liner technology and that's Invisalign. It really is the best hands down. And I researched this for years because Invisalign is very expensive. The average dentist is paying $2,100 more with taxes for, to offer their patients in this line, which is why it's so expensive because their costs are so expensive. Um, and so I've researched this inside and out. You need the best clear liner technology for three reasons. You need the best uh, scanner, you need the best software to move teeth, and you need the best aligner manufacturing technology. Um, so Invisalign is the best. So I always said you need two things. You need the best clear liner technology, and then you need an expert to know how to actually digitally treatment plan that teeth. Uh, or that treatment plan, and then make sure that, that the patient is wearing them, they're on track, and when they're not on track, they actually know how to get them back on track. So again, it's Invisalign and an orthodontist, and that's what we're combining on our platform. Awesome. So, you know, when I uh, look at what you've done, and now that you've, you've got about a year's worth of uh, experience behind you, how has the ride been? Let me ask that. Um, it is a journey. <laughs> it is a journey. I will say, um, she, I would say it is the highest highs and the lowest lows that you've ever had of building a business. Um, you know, when you're in school and you're an independent contributor and you're in charge of your own destiny, you know, you just, you know, you have a path, you have a path that you're going down. You're like, you study, you do well, you study, you do well, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going starting a business like this that's never existed before, you're making it up as you go. <laughs> you know, it's like, who do I hire? What kind of what kind of experience? Even if you know you need a product manager, what kind of product manager? What level? Do you want someone with two years of experience, seven years of experience? Learning how to hire, learning how to fire, learning how to send investor updates, learning how to motivate your team and create a good culture. These are all things that I had no idea. <laughs> and you just learn as you go. And it's one, and when things are going well, it's like the best experience you've ever had in your life. But when things are bad, like when you have to, you realize you had to fire someone, it's like the worst experience ever. Um, but that said, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So what, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've seen over the last year? All of it. <laughs> all of it. Everything is a challenge. Um, everything is challenging. Fundraising is a challenge. Um, keeping your team, hiring the right team is probably the biggest challenge. Um, I would say that's the number one. Hiring the right team and giving them the tools to hit the ground running, hiring people who are better than you, um, hiring people who are experts, experts in operations, experts in marketing, experts in legal. You know, we were working with the wrong law firm for three years. We finally found the right law firm. I can't tell you how massive that is, getting the right contracts. Like it's all about the people. And I think that's the most important thing I, I would say for me about running a business. It's constantly meeting people. So you know what kind of people you need to bring into your business. So from, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, where the business is headed, uh, what are the plans, let's say for the next uh, three to five years? Yeah, so for the next year, our plan, we are in this journey of what we're calling product market fit. How do we find product market fit? And for us, that means we know that dentists have this captive audience of people who trust them. How do we meet every single patient where they are? and educate them, provide them value on the benefits of clear of orthodontic treatment with clear liners by an orthodontist on their on the future of their oral health and educating them on why they need an orthodontist. 
um, instead of any of these mail order liner companies and why it's worth paying a premium um, and treating that demand at the dental office. If we can figure out a way to educate and provide value to every single patient at the dental office, we are then not only providing value for the patient, but also for the dentist and for the orthodontist. And at that point, we have a really sustainable business. So that's the focus right now. Once we have that, um, we are going to expand throughout California. And then we plan to expand throughout major cities. And we basically are going to work with the top orthodontists. So we were inviting orthodontists to join our membership community. And they have the ability to build a hybrid dental practice um, with the digital experience that patients are looking for. So our orthodontists right now make about twice the amount that they're normally making um, at any other job. And so we are looking to make them five to 10 times as much as they're currently making so that they are making the private practice money that they're looking for for a brick and mortar practice. So do you see yourself uh, pivoting into other services for dentists or doing other things with the data that you gather as you expand and as you continue to evolve? Yeah, you know, that's always down the line. Um, I will say I there's a huge amount of value that we can add to upgrade and change and modernize the dental industry. Um, we're starting here and we're staying focused on the orthodontic industry. But I will say the vision, um, my vision is that we can turn dental offices into essentially like hubs, like Apple Center hubs, where dentists can actually incorporate every specialist into their office and provide their patients with expert led care, you know, on implants, on root canals, um, on crowns and bridges, on all the specialty work right from their office with the two front hub platform serving as the platform where they can onboard specialists and very seamlessly and easily pay them, provide their patients with an excellent digital experience um, and really turn more into business owners instead of just ind independent contributors. You know, we talked about the technology part of it. We talked about, uh, you know, how uh, dentists can optimize their space and do more with what they currently have. We also talked about where as a, uh, for the customers, you know, it, it could be probably, um, you know, digital kind of visits, um, you know, where they manage uh, with, with their orthodontist or dentist for that matter. Do you see uh, any intervention in the actual care aspect of it? Do you see your company providing a better level of care or intervening to provide a certain standard of care in, in the practices? Well, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, 19 out of 20, you know, providers in the world who offer Invisalign are general dentists. Um, mm -hmm. Our goal here is for every Invisalign provider to be an orthodontist. And the dentist, the dental office is the hub that's offering their patients orthodontist-led Invisalign treatment. And by, and by doing that, we're elevating the standard of care because patients are getting the results they're looking for in the shortest amount of time possible and affordably through our platform with the best patient experience. So we believe that that's exactly what we're doing to our core. Awesome, awesome. So from here on, Ingrid, um, do you see yourself, uh, I know you're working in California and then you wanna expand nationally, but what about an international footprint? Do you see that in the, in the possibilities in the future? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, my, I know orthodontists all over the world, you know, in Brazil and Geneva and Thailand. And I'll tell you, this is a problem everywhere. Mail order aligner companies have, have sprung up all over the world. Um, and dentists all over the world are doing Invisalign, which means that patients all over the world are not getting high quality care. And the orthodontic practice, the typical brick and mortar orthodontic practice no longer exists because essentially Patient, dentists aren't referring to them anymore and patients are seeking alternatives. And so the typical brick and mortar orthodontic practice is not profitable. So we plan to expand internationally 100%. Our goal is nationally this year, internationally in the next two years. Great. So in, in terms of uh, you know dentists or uh, orthodontists out there who would like to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? And where can someone find more information about what you have to offer? Yeah, absolutely. I would say my email, it's Ingrid, I-N-G-R-I-D, at my two fronts, which is like my two front teeth spelled out, M-Y-T-W-O, 
F-R-O-N-T dot com. Um, or follow me on Instagram, which is D-R Ingrid Mura, I-N-G-R-I-D-M-U-R-R-A, or follow us in our company Instagram at my two friends. Awesome. Awesome. And in terms of uh, your website? Yep. Our website is um, www.mytwofriend.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ingrid. This has been a pleasure learning about, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's often rare that you find somebody coming out of school, uh, you know, especially in the, me- in the medical or the dental field and uh, getting into business without uh, taking a couple of years in practice, which is phenomenal uh, that, that you're doing this and the whole uh, care-centered concierge approach that you have, uh, that's phenomenal too. And we wish you the very best as you make progress. Thank you so much, Ajib. I really appreciate you having me. This has been really fun. Thank you.